The Gospel is written in the 21st chapter of that according to St. Matthew, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to thee, O Christ. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, and were come to Bethphage, unto the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught to you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a colt the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a great multitude spread their garments in the way, others cut down branches from the trees, and strawed them on the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna, the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be, Praise to, be to thee, O Christ. Christ. The children of the Hebrews, carrying palms and olive branches, went forth to meet the Lord, crying out and saying, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. God, our Saviour, who is Jesus Christ, entered Jerusalem as Messiah, to suffer and to die. We may ever hail him as our King, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who liveth and reigneth with thee in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. O Lord, remove not thy succour afar from me. Have respect to my defense and hear me. Deliver me from the mouth of the lion. Yea, from the horns of the unicorn hast thou regarded my cry. My God, my God, look upon me. Why hast thou forsaken me? And art so far from my help, and from the words of my complaint. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Christe eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, 
For thy tender love towards mankind has sent thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, that all mankind should follow the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may both follow the example of his patience and also be made partakers of his resurrection through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The epistle is written in the second chapter of the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians, beginning at the fifth verse. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and after that receive me with glory. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple, and departed, and went, and hanged himself. And the chief priests took the silver pieces, and said, It is not lawful for to put them into the treasury, because it is the price of blood. And they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Wherefore that field was called the field of blood unto this day. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they the children of Israel did value, and gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord appointed me. And Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest. And when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then saith Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee? And he answered him to never a word, insomuch that the governor marveled greatly. Now at that feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. And they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why? What evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that they had mocked him, they took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. 
and as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they were come unto a place called Golgotha, that is to say, a place of a skull, they gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him, and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there, and set up over his head his accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests, mocking him with the elders and scribes, said, He saved others, himself he could not save. If he be the King of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there when they heard that said, this man calleth for Elias. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, let be. Let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city with him, watching Jesus, saw the earthquake, and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We heard in this morning's epistle that Jesus made himself of no reputation. As many of you will know in the original Greek, that is a stronger word still. He emptied himself. And emptiness is something we're getting very used to at the moment. Empty streets, empty shops, empty larders perhaps, or fridges. And worse still, the emptiness of loss. People we love removed from us empty time stretching in front of us where we don't quite know how to fill it when we haven't got our usual routines. But go back to that phrase in the epistle. Jesus emptied himself. God empties himself so that there will be room for the life of others. Jesus is emptying of himself in the incarnation, in his life, and on the cross, is something that makes room for our well-being. And that's perhaps the key to understanding the whole of this week. God makes room for us. God has no private interests to defend. God has no boundaries to police. Or protect. There's only a great opening of space for us to live in. So celebrating Holy Week in these circumstances tells us something about God 
and also that something about God tells us something about these circumstances. For our when we achieve some level of inner emptiness, some readiness to make room for one another, to make room for those we love, but also to make room for the stranger. Here we are in this rather empty time in the life of our society, certainly doing what we do for the well-being of those who are closest to us, but also surely making room for those we've never met and will never meet. We're doing something and stepping back from doing certain things for the sake of a whole community, very few of whom we actually know, and yet we make that space. We create the strange emptiness that we're living in at the moment so that our community may not suffer, so that other individuals may not be put at mortal risk in ways we have no idea about. Holy Week in this empty time tells us that we need to go on a journey towards that inner emptiness where with God and by God's grace, we can actually open a door to others, make space for them. We're called into that place within ourselves where there's something more going on than just defensiveness and acquisitiveness. And it's a very extreme kind of learning that we're called to just at the moment. It's a journey, I've said. And of course, Holy Week is a time when, as a rule, there's quite a bit of movement, quite a bit of traveling. Indeed, you could say in Holy Week, the church is probably a bit more public and a bit more mobile than it is at any other time of year. Ordinarily, we'd be having a Palm Sunday procession. People often have processions of witness in their towns and cities on Good Friday. on Easter Sunday morning. Lots of movement, lots of journeying, lots of public activity. But wonderful as all that is, perhaps, perhaps there are times when it prevents us seeing as clearly as we should how the real journey of this week is a journey inside. The journey to that place deep in us where with God, and in God and by God's grace, we somehow get in touch with that emptiness where we're called to make space for one another. That's the mind of Christ. That's the impulse, the motivation that shapes all that Christ is and Christ does and Christ suffers. And in that section of Paul's letter to the Philippians, we're told we must have that mind in us, that kind of emptiness. So this week's journey is a journey within, a journey to that place before the cross where we stand alone before the cross and look into the way in which God opens the door for us, makes space for us, empties himself for us so that we may live. We stand before that and we know we are judged for our failures to walk in that way but we also know that the door is open, that the way is set before us. Jesus on the cross, says the letter to the Hebrews, opens a new and living way for us. Jesus himself says in the revelation to John, I've put before you an open door and no one will close it. The self-emptying God, the God who makes room for us, is the God we meet this week, the God in whose presence we examine ourselves and weep over ourselves and our world on Good Friday. But if we're willing in that solitary encounter with the self-emptying God, if we're willing to take the step into the space he makes for us, to accept the room he gives us to live, then we ourselves will step that little bit closer to the same freedom in our lives with others. It's a bit like scrambling over all the 
clutter that stands in the way of that door, that opening. All the stuff we accumulate, the things we're glued onto by our passions and our preferences, the things we create for ourselves by way of obstacles, the fantasies and the fears that we live with. Well, this week the journey is climbing over that mountain of interior rubbish till we get to the place where we see the open door into a freedom we can barely imagine. The freedom to make space for one another and learn to live together, not as a suspicious collection of heavily defended egos, but as a true community, a true body, caring for all, supporting all, living in, with and for all as best we can. Let this mind be in you, says Paul, which was in Christ. He, in the name of God his Father, made room for all of us, for our lives. The cost is something we can barely imagine, and costly it will be for ourselves too, because we are so addicted to our inner clutter, our inner confusion, and yet the door is open. This week's journey is towards that open door, that living way, a journey inwards which will yet take us not further from but closer to our fellow human beings, the ones we know and love and the ones we don't. And only in taking that journey will we, as a church, as a national community, as a global community, recover the wisdom we need to live together. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one vision of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. Father, as your church enters Holy Week, as it finds itself caught once more between the grief and the triumph aroused by the memory of your son's, your son's passion, we pray that it may face the particular challenges of remembering it this year, in this empty time, with grace and patience. We pray for those working to draw us into the mysteries of Holy Week, sorrow with those for whom Easter seems far away, for whom it will not be met by the forms of support and comfort that your word promises. And we pray for a stirring up of the sacrificial love, of the making room, that we are to witness this Friday in our own hearts and in our communities. We need to collaborate and to hold to account. We pray for just protection for those who continue to work at this time in healthcare, in education, and in law enforcement. We pray for a fostering of love and mercy towards all those who may encounter. And we pray for those whose lives have been made more precarious by this crisis, those left unemployed or facing abuse, those forced or unable to migrate, that they may be held in the continuing revelation of your kingdom's justice. We pray for those suffering from the coronavirus and rejoice for those who are recovering, that all of these may find comfort and healing. We remember particularly 
in the wider family of St. Clements, Van der Ely, Brian Watkins, Woody Khan and Sean Parker. And we pray for those who have died tonight and will die today, that they may be welcomed into the eternal life open to us by the cross. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thy rebuke hath broken my heart, and I am full of heaviness. I looked for some to have pity upon me, but there was no man. Neither found I any to comfort me. They gave me gold to eat, and when I was thirsty, they gave me vinegar to drink. Pray that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive the sacrifice of thy hands, to the praise and glory of his name, to our benefit and that of all his holy church. Either you truly know to repent of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, <clears throat> Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and beware our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins, to all them that harsh repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is for the meet right and our bounden duty, that which is at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, and in his Son, our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee, and saying, Holy, holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And his institute and his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to the institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, 
he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks to thee, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy humble servants, having in remembrance the precious death and passion of thy dear Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, merciful to accept this our sacrifice of thanks and praise, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences. And grant that we, who are partakers of this Holy Communion, may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be one God, all honour and glory, now and for ever. Amen. As our Saviour hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come unto my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for us, Preserve our bodies and souls out of everlasting life. O oh my Father, if out this cup Lord may Jesus not Christ pass us, away from me, preserve thy body and soul, except I drink it, thy will be done. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life.
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee, for that art vouchsafed to feed us, till you receive these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and us assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the midst of the body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs of hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as I had prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Over to Rowan. The Lord be with you. And, and with thy spirit. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. <laughs>